Hello there. Welcome to the closing bell on uh, the was it, 21st of June. And um, that's for me, uh, that is, uh, about midday. And look, I don't know about you, but I'm uh, pretty damn bored of this market at the moment. Um, four months of the ASX uh, remaining stuck. Um, there's not a lot of excitement out there, really explosive things um, to be looking at, unless you're on Drone Shield. And, um, you know, every week I'm sort of sidling up and looking for something interesting to point out for you. And uh, it's few and far between um, at the moment. It's just one of those dead markets where everyone's waiting, waiting um, to get some indication of which way things are going to break. We know market breadth is looking pretty bad at the moment. There's only a few stocks going vertical and the rest of the market sort of treading water or... Um, drifting lower in that sort of smaller cap, micro cap space, so many stocks really on their knees. And, uh, you know, this tax loss selling, I reckon, re reaching a crescendo. So let's hope that we're going to get through this tax loss selling period and we see a nice bounce um, in July. That would be really nice to see because I'm certainly sick to death um, of the current situation. But there is one market which I'm sure you can tell what that chart is we're looking at here, the oil price. And I've been, you know, preparing you over the last uh, few months. I, I've sort of pointed out that look, we're at on the cusp of what could be um, a shift in that longer term trend. Um, so I want to do a recap for you because I think it is important um, to be prepared for this because there is so few uh, opportunities out there um, really for investors to get on board something that could be explosive. Um, I took you through uh, uranium gold um, over the last year. Um, if you've been watching these videos, you know that I picked them pretty early on. And I'm seeing something similar in oil. Um, so let's just jump in and um, recap on what I've said and see, you know, what's happened just in this last couple of weeks where we've seen a 12% jump in the oil price. Um, so just looking at this for people who may not um, have watched all the past videos um, on this. This is the oil price um, Brent crude going back, you know, many decades. This is from, you know, year 2000 up to 2007, um, uh, 8, when the oil price went on just a massive run going up to, you know, around 150 bucks, which uh, is pretty nuts. And, uh, you know, my view is a lot of the price action we've seen since then is really sort of an oscillation uh, within that range. And the way I look at things is, you know, I'm sort of looking at the midpoint of that uh, range as a really important level uh, where the market oscillates um, around uh, and, you know, really getting people uh, bullish, you know, up here, getting people bearish down here. And, um, you know, they're all wrong. Um, bullish up here and it collapses, bearish down there and it rallies. Um, so that's sort of a really good um, depiction of how I see, you know, how markets function, getting sort of overextended um, on both sides, the upside and the downside. And it's about sort of picking those moments when uh, momentum um, shifts and and where how um, uh, trends to the upside sort of continue, I guess. You know, you, you get these long-term you can see back in uh, this period here, we got this, uh, you see my trends there. I use a 10 period exponential versus a 20 simple on the monthly. And just look at how good uh, it's been at picking these sort of long-term trend shifts over that time, um, you know, up, down, uh, just to get a sense of what the uh, sort of uh, likelihood is of more downside or more upside, those short-term trend shift there, but then away it goes again. Um, so that the moving average indicator has just been pretty fabulous in the oil price um, over this long term. And uh, it, it, the point is that, you know, with something like this that has been so good at uh, picking the shifts in momentum to the upside, um, if you've got that record over what decades and here we are the that long-term trend has 
started shifting. Look, it's early days, but I'm just pretty interested um, at this point because if we do get that shift back into a long-term uptrend and a continuation of um, this uptrend, which you know has been pretty huge from the 2020 or 2021 low, um, that rally that happened, you know, taking it all the way up to 130. I mean, that is an immensely strong rally that's happened over the last few years. And really this sell-off that we've seen has just been a correction um, really back to sort of the, the middle of that wave. Um, so if the support is there, you know, no reason why we're not going to see a continuation of this very impulsive rally to the upside. And uh, the fact that it's also retesting that very long-term um, support or, you know, the, the midpoint of the whole trading range of the past few decades um, is quite important to me. Uh, you'll see back in uh, this period here, what's that, 2017, 2018, uh, when we've had these oscillations uh, between the buy and sell zone and you know the buy zone being this area here, you can see, which is a 75 to 87% retracement of this massive wave. And that's the area where I expect there's you know higher probability that you'll see a reversal out of that sort of area and uh, prices will revisit that point of control. So that's sort of what you're saying uh, with this theory is that you'll often see an oscillation that revisits the midpoint. Um, so that's sort of the, the, the high odds, I guess, is saying that you will see prices head back to that midpoint point often. And the midpoint can either be sort of uh, support or resistance or prices will you know crash through the midpoint and head all the way to the other side of the range you know like we saw here in 2013 was up in the sell zone there for a long time when it failed went through the point of control collapsed all the way down into the buy zone and in this period 2020 rallied through broke through the point of control and shot off up to the sell zone. Uh, but in this period, you know, you, you got that rally which revisited the point of control, but that became massive resistance, didn't it? So it was just a revisiting of that major level, which then got rejected again, and we went off on another big sell-off. So the point uh, of that little conversation is just saying, just imagine the same thing here. If we've 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 shot through the point of control, rallied up into the sell zone, we've then had a correction, which has gone back to revisit that major support zone. So if the support is there and it takes off, you could expect to see a really nice strong rally to the upside, sort of a similar like a mirror image of what you've seen here of retesting the point of control and failing. I'm saying here, retest the point of control and take off again. So that's sort of why I'm uh, really watching this like a hawk at the moment and looking at uh, the very uh, short term, you'll see over this last few months, I've been saying, look, let's, let's keep an eye on this because the long-term trend is shifting, but you can see it's stuck between um, this range, you know, 70 bucks on the bottom side and around 95 bucks on the top side. And you may remember I've been saying, you know, it's not until it really breaks out above this 95 level that everything says, wow, watch out, uh, this thing can really blast off. And I've still got that line in the sand uh, below that sort of $70 region is, wow, watch out, uh, because it could uh, fail and go all the way back down to that buy zone area again, in which case, you know, I'd be getting pretty excited if it got down there and turned back up because my long-term fundamental view is that we need oil uh, longer than pe many people expect and that the sort of expectation that we won't be needing oil lowers, um, you know, a lot of um, uh, people exploring and spending money on exploration and, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, 
if demand surprises on the upside, uh, we could be in for um, much higher oil prices than people expect. So uh, just looking at it from that point of view and, you know, just pointing out for you again why I think, um, you know, a rally through that 95 region could really be a starting gun for quite an intense move is just looking back at how these long-term trends do shift. And, you know, what often happens is um, you'll get an initial burst of buying once um, the trend shifts. So let's look back here, 2002. You can see the long-term trend shifting there. You'll often get a, you know, a bit of buying, but then a retest will happen saying, well, is the buying really there? You know, so a retest of that longer term moving average. And it's once it then rallies and breaks out above the previous high that you then start to see a really nice, strong move. Similar situation here, uh, 2009, 10, we've got the trend shift. So we've got you know, a nice, strong rally. But then we've got a big sell-off back to indecision, back to the long-term moving averages. And once price has turned up, broke out above that high, off to the races. Also, on the downside, you can see, I'll, I'll do it, sorry, I'll go along nice and clearly. So we've got there, trend goes up, a nice rally for a few months, but then the revisit of the long-term moving averages, the buying pressure is there, rallies, breaks through that high, and then we off to the races to the upside. Uh, similar on the downside, trend shift. So we get, you know, nice selling going on, but then we get the rally back to the long-term moving averages, and when prices fail below that wave, crash time. Watch out. So just looking at a similar thing, long-term trend just shifting now, and look, it may need to, you know, have a bit of a run and then a pullback, and then, you know, busting up through those levels is when it's really going to take off. So from that point of view, it's still early days, but the setup being there is that there's this sort of resistance zone up here. And, you know, similar to what we saw back here, where it's uh, treading water around that, you know, very important level, the midpoint of all that structure, where it's just bounced off a few weeks ago and trying to decide, is this long-term trend actually shifting or uh, is this downtrend that's currently in place going to actually continue? So that's why it's really touch and go at the moment. And you see it's in 12% rally in two weeks is giving you that sense that there is some buying pressure at this major level and it's heading back above those long-term moving averages. So it's almost like that sort of starting gun very early saying, well, this, this is quite interesting. And we have very clear lines in the sand below. You know, I will quite happily fall on my sword for the short term on my sort of bullish view if the music stops and things just turn straight back down and it breaks down below that level, uh, you know, I'll run away and then good, get bullish on another day um, when things turn back up again. But right now, you know, this is quite interesting what's, what's happening uh, versus what I've been saying to you for quite a while. And look, that's why, um, uh, you know, I, I go into a much um, deeper analysis of all of this and, and how I go about things, how I picked the uranium and gold last year. Um, if you did watch a few of these videos a while ago, you didn't jump on um, yet, maybe you watched um, uh, last month. Um, but, you know, if you haven't, um, check out this presentation that I've got for you. Um, we're just running this just for this weekend where people can join me um, because I'm, I'm going to be attacking this oil price if I get all of those conditions um, set off. And, you know, once it does get set off, you can see uh, you don't have much time to react. Um, when these trends go, um, if you're not uh, on board, you're chasing things higher and uh, you miss out. 
Um, so uh, if you'd like to check it out, uh, this is one of the few things out there that's uh, really quite interesting. Um, uh, there should be a link um, jumping up at you right now. Um, please check it out. Um, learn a bit more about, about what I'm doing, how I'm helping people out, uh, what I've achieved in the last sort of year. Had a very high strike rate um, on what we've actually done. Um, you know, I behave more like a sniper, really, in a market like this. I'm only trading when something really jumps out at me. And um, uh, this oil price currently just setting the groundwork, um, I think, to surprise uh, many to the upside. Um, so uh, that's really the major thing that I can see out there that's of interest um, right now in a market that is dead as a doornail and not offering uh, any free money to anyone, um, uh, this thing uh, is uh, worth uh, having a think about uh, and still, you know, long-term bullish copper and, and those sort of things as well. Um, but uh, this one probably the closest to uh, a potentially explosive move to the upside. All right, well, well please, yep, yeah, check out the, the presentation. Um, we're going to be taking that presentation down at midnight on Monday. Um, so if you're watching this after midnight Monday, uh, you won't be able to access um, that video and the information on there. Um, but please uh, check it out uh, because it is uh, looking pretty interesting to me. All right, cheers. I think that's enough for this week and um, I'll come back with more next week.